Hello everyone, this is the Bridge for Math, Dr. B coming live at you with video. Um, we've been doing a lot of videos lately on functions, but today we're going to talk about a circle. And by the way, a circle, believe it or not, doesn't represent a function. It's part of something called conic sections. C-O-N-I-C, conic sections. Well, let's talk about a circle. When you think of a circle, if you want to say, hey, what defines a circle? I hope you'd say the center and its radius would be a good way to know what a circle is looking like and where it's at. Well, it turns out they usually give some special letters for the center or a vertex or something important. H, comma, K. So you might have noticed that in your algebra. They use these letters to represent a specific point. H represents the X value of the circle. K represents the Y you know, coordinate of the circle. R is just the radius from the center to a point on the circle. So this kind of shows you the geometry. Well, there's a standard equation of a circle. This is the standard form. Turns out it's written x minus h parenthesis squared plus y minus k parenthesis squared equals r squared. Now look at this. You probably feel very comfortable with the equation of a line, like slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So what defines the, the line, the slope, and the intercept? So you can see this. Well, what defines the circle, the center, and the radius. So it's completely inside this equation of a circle. So hopefully you feel it. Well, it turns out when we're doing a lot of geometry, we need to use some other formulas to get these two pieces of information. If we want to find the length of a radius, if we want to find the length of a radius, do you agree? You need to find the distance between the center and a point on the circle. Well, it turns out there's this handy formula called the distance formula, which you can use to find the length of the radius. Simply written, one x-coordinate minus another x-coordinate. So I have a picture over here for you. Here's a point called point one. Here's another point called point two. Well, the distance from this point to that point literally is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. I've had students ask me if it makes a difference which way I do it. Well, since you're squaring it, honestly, it, it doesn't make a difference, but I encourage you to be consistent because other times it does make a difference. So be consistent. If you do x2 in front here, do y2 in front there, okay? Well, in addition to finding the radius, how do we find the center of a circle? How do we find the center of a circle? Well, a lot of times if you have two points, and in the question I'm going to give you next, we actually have two points on a circle, well, how do we find the middle? Well, you have midpoint formula to find. It will help you find the center of a circle. So how do you find the midpoint or the halfway point on a line segment? Pretty simple. Take the x values, add them up, and divide by 2. It's kind of like finding the average. The average x distance and the average y distance will tell you where the midpoint is going to be. These are the formulas you're going to need to tackle a very challenging question that I'm going to pose next. So let's do it. Now, don't get intimidated by the board. We'll go through it step by step. Question is, suppose you have a line segment. So it's a word problem, those dreaded word problems. A line segment goes through the center of a circle, and it intersects the circle at these two ordered pairs at these following points. 3, 9, and 7, 11. Okay. Question asks you to write the standard form of the equation of a circle defined by this information. So if someone says, hey, write an equation of a circle, you know right away. I, need, I better get a radius and I better get a, the center of that circle. Well, how could we find the center of the circle? You have to visualize what's happening. So I always tell you, if you have a word problem, visualize what's happening. Read it carefully. Notice it says a line segment through the center of a circle at these two points. So over here, I've kind of, first of all, I plotted these two points. 3, 9, you go over 3 and up 9. That's where this first blue dot is. This is the ordered pair 3, 9. I called it point 1. And then I plotted the point 7, 11. So I go 7 over and 11 up. And I have these two blue points. I call this one point 2. Well, it says that a line segment goes through the center of a circle, through to these points. So this line segment goes through the center of the circle. Huh. 
If you draw the picture, you might come to a quick conclusion. The center of the circle has to be midway between these two points. Huh. So I can use the midpoint formula right off the top to get my center. So my first x1, x1 represents the x value at point 1, 3, plus x2, the x value at point 2, which is 7, 3 plus 7 divided by 2 to get the average. Your x coordinate of the center is going to be 5. Let's look at the y values, the formula y1 plus y2. Well, the y value at point 1 is 9. The y value at point 2 is 11. Add them up. 9 plus 11, you get 20, divided by 2 to get the average, 10. You've just found the center of the circle with that piece of information by visualizing what's going on. That is huge. If you have 5, 10, your ordered pair, the center is 5, 10. Now you know one key point of the formula to write your equation of a circle. What's the next point? Well, you need to know the radius of the circle. So I've kind of drawn something that looks like, you can look at the radius just by this distance. And you notice I keep, that's how I drew the circle, I just kept drawing that distance around. This is equidistant around the center. Or, to get accurate and get exact, this line segment that goes through the center, it's actually the diameter. It goes through the center and goes all the way out to these two points. That's called the diameter. If we can find the distance, which in this case, I apologize, D for distance, D for diameter, but they're different. This distance, simply using the distance formula, x2 minus x1 squared. I come through here, do some math with these ordered pairs, and I get, the, I get this distance, which happens to be the diameter. I just need half of it. So to get the radius, I multiply one half of what I found, which was 2 squared of 5. That was my diameter, the length of the whole thing. What's 1 half times 2 squared of 5? Well, the 2's clearly cancel because there's multiplication here. You get a radius of square root of 5, so I apologize. Evil numbers, and who likes a number that doesn't work out, so a square root of 5. Well, it turns out it works out okay in this question. Because you remember the show me the money, let's put it all together and get this answer? Didn't the formula have radius squared anyways? Well, if your radius is square root 5, what is radius squared? It's square root 5 squared. Now it becomes nice. What happens when you square a square root? It goes away. So that's where you get equals 5. Now I want to make sure you see this. x minus h squared. So all we have to do is plug in the center and plug in the radius. Well, what's the center? It's 5 comma 10. So for h, I plug in 5. So it's x minus 5 squared. For k, I plug in 10. It's the y value of the center. y minus 10 squared. This 5 and this 5 are very different. Don't get confused there. This is the center of the circle, and this 5 was the radius. So, key thing here, if you're given a question regarding a circle, you need to find the center, and you need to find the radius. I've given you formulas in this video to tackle any such question. I believe you can conquer. It's a lot of stuff, and it looks maybe a little bit intense, but I believe in you. And keep checking back for more videos from the Bridge for Math. Thank you so much from Dr. B. Peace.